Warning, the Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation, home of unprotected talk, borders, language, culture, and here he is, Michael Savage. Suddenly it's uh, 1965 all over again. Let's hear the doors on The Savage Nation. Kane is in the news again. The old war horse is back in the news. The schmuck of a senator. The schmuck of a senator is back in the news. The Democrat, Republican, the rhino, the man who would be more comfortable working for Obama than working against him, is now about to drag down our greatest hope to save the republic. Welcome to the Savage Nation. Now, it is true that Trump did say it, he didn't say it, he almost said it, he could have said it, he might have said it, he was almost going to say it. You think he said it, he could have said it. I don't know if he said it, he might have said it. Who knows what Trump said, but he's no good, he's got to go. That's what's going on right now. Let me be very clear. To me, all active duty service members, except the top brass who hide their butts in the Pentagon, are heroes. Let me repeat it and write it down. All active duty service members, except the top brass, who hide their contractor butts in the Pentagon are heroes. The issue is Trump. The issue is McCain. We know that McCain is a rotten scoundrel. We know that McCain has opened the borders. We know that McCain doesn't stand for America anymore. But we also know that he's a war hero. Now, what did Trump actually say? That's the real issue. We're going to play that today. The bigger issue was not Trump McCain. The bigger issue was Obama selling us out to the mullahs and headscarves in Iran. The big issue was Obama going around Congress and going to the vermin in the U.N. and doing a deal behind the American people's backs. That's the real issue. That's issue two. A nuclear deal that you know is a pathway to a nuclear bomb. We all know that. A very big story. And then the issue is the dead Marines from last week and how the media and the lawyer working for the Vermin's family who killed these Marines in cold blood are trying to spin it that he had PTSD, he was on drugs, he didn't fit in, the, the poor Muslim was a victim, he had mental problems. Well, they all have mental problems if they do a thing like this. The ones who shot the cartoonists must have had mental problems too if they believe they're supposed to kill infidels. I'd call that a mental problem. I call raping eight-year-old Yazidi girls a mental problem. I would call blowing up churches a mental problem. So now we're reading, oh, he's a victim. That's the liberal, the liberal media. He was a southerner, the Muslim who shot the Marines. And he had, uh, let's see, it was Andrea Mitchell, one of the worst people in the history of the world. By the way, Andrea Mitchell has a long history of an apologist for radical Islam, in my estimation. She has a long history of an apologist for criminals in my estimation, including a former Federal Reserve chairman, a husband, who, by the way, many people believe destroyed the economy on purpose. So Andrea Mitchell last week was on MSNBC, the worst network in the history of uh, Al Jazeera, and asks the terrorist classmate, did he hunt? Did he shoot? Did he have guns? Was it a Southern thing? Or why didn't she ask, was it a Muslim thing? Was it in the Quran thing? No, she asked about Southern culture. We'll play that for you. And as we speak, the deceiver in chief clicked his heels today on the UN passing approval of his ability for Iran to develop a nuclear weapon. Samantha Power, a long term, a long term left wing fanatic. Okay, you get the picture. I'm not going to outline the whole show. But let me put it to you this way. All of Obama's lies and cover-ups for Islamic terrorism have been debunked. First, they used poverty. Then they used lack of education. Then they used lack of economic opportunity. Well, Abdul Aziz Azaza Zuzu Zaza, who killed the Marines, Abdul Aziz Azaza Zaza Zuzu, had a bachelor's in electrical engineering. And he came from a middle-class family. And his Muslim father, although he was Palestinian, had a government job. And his Palestinian father sent his son to visit Jordan for seven months. And now the lawyer for Abdulaziz Azazaz's family is saying, oh, they sent him to Jordan to straighten them out because he was getting in trouble with bad people here. 
They didn't know. They sent him to Jordan. You hear that? They sent him to Jordan to get him away from bad people. And he came back a jihadi. How does that work? So you see, it's all a cover up and all a lie. It's all apologists. So we got these three topics, or four topics, or five topics. And the phone number is 855 407 282. And in honor of John McCain's war service in the 60s, we're going to be playing Vietnam era music. Uh, Robert, do we have any other Vietnam era music? Is there any way to move the screen so I could see your face instead of the back of the screen on the Skype? I like looking at your beard and your hair. I, I, I'd rather look at my producer in Dallas on the Skype. There it is. He's hiding. It's Monday. I don't blame him. Hey, my producer with the, with the hipster beard. And he runs the boards. And then we got Jim doing the calls at 855-407-282. Trump McCain. Trump McCain. McCain Trump. Trump McCain. Trump McCain. What's a little disturbing about Trump is this. He was on this show about four weeks ago. Remember? And I asked them, uh, are you going to run? We have a fear. Many of us have fear you're going to run a third-party campaign. Pull a Perot, undermine any Republican chance, and automatically ele elect Hillary in, in order to get a deal with the Clintons. He, remember he paused for about 20, 30 seconds, and he wouldn't answer? He spun me, and I let the whale go out on the line, and then he came back, and the line snapped, and he said, no, I'm a lifetime Republican. I will only run as a Republican. Well, that just changed. Over the weekend, he said he might run as a third party. Not good. Also, him not wanting to come back on the radio show with Michael Savage's audience. Not good. He's giving interviews with unknown gun show people, and he won't come back here. This is exactly what Michelle Bachman did. It's exactly what all of them do. They're super conservative. They come on the show, then they don't want to know you. So they figure the 9 million people or 10 million or 20 million who listen to the show don't vote. But four people who own a gun and watch Duck Dynasty... Do vote? Okay, so who's advising McCain? I mean, uh, excuse me, who's advising McTrump? Who is advising McTrump? McTrump is the question. I know we're going we're gonna to blend the two. We're going to morph the two names. It's going to be McTrump by the time the show is over. So how do I feel about Trump and whether he should apologize to McCain? I am not a former serviceman. I did not serve in Vietnam. And to me, all active duty service members, except the top brass, who hide in the Pentagon are heroes. McCain is a war hero. Five years in captivity makes him a hero. But he's a schmuck as a senator. That's the issue. And that's what Trump should have said. McCain is a war hero, and he's a putz as a senator. He's done everything to bust the borders and let the Mexicans overrun America, et cetera, and so on. So who do I turn to for the actually correct opinion? Well, me, of course. Myself and I give you my opinions, depending upon my mood. It's from me or from myself or I. <laughs> I never knew who me, myself, and I were. Did you know what that means, me, myself, and I? I heard it in a cartoon when I was five years old. I guess that's the id, the ego, and the superego. We never know who's actually talking, do we? In other words, we're all crazy and multi personality So which Trump are we talking about? Which McCain are we talking about? Which Obama are we talking about? Which Bush are we talking about? You get it? In other words, we're very complex people, all of us. I would therefore turn to a certifiable military veteran, such as Senator Cotton, who I greatly respect. He is the number one senator on my list. If it were me, I'd have him run for president, and I'd vote for him. I would back his campaign. What does Senator Cotton say about the McCain-Trump situation? I will play clip three, and you will hear right now. Go ahead, please. I disagree with Mr. Trump's comments. John McCain is a great American. Everyone knows that he was a POW for over five years. But here's one thing that most people don't know about him. His dad was a senior admiral at the time he was a POW. And because of that, the Vietnamese offered him an opportunity for early release in direct That's violation correct. of the code of conduct for prisoners of war. Correct. John McCain declined that early release correct. and obeyed the code of conduct. So I think we all should respect and honor John McCain's service. Now, that's a man who knows what he's talking about. That's not Andrea Mitchell's uh, hairdresser. That is not uh, Barack Obama's, oh, i got to be very careful here, uh, caddy. That is, <laughs> that is not, uh, I, I can go down the list. I'm not in the, I don't know who else to pick. As a, that is not Donald Trump's hairdresser. That is not, uh, well, he doesn't have a stylist. Obama has no stylist. Okay, Michelle's personal stylist. It's not, it's not Michelle's personal stylist. 
It is not Michelle's travel agent. That is Senator Cotton, who says Trump should apologize, and he's a war hero, served recently, served with honor recently. He says that McCain is a great American. Notice he didn't say that uh, the talk show hosts who call themselves that are great Americans. A bunch of schmucks. Do they still call themselves great Americans? They do not. They don't. They, it's impossible. They don't. They get on a show and say, you're a great American. No, I'm a great American. No, you're a great American. No, I'm a great American. No, I'm a great American. No, sir, you're a great American. No, I'm a great American. You're a great... Never served anywhere. One owns 18,000 slum units in Atlanta, but he's a great American. You hear this? Unbelievable to me what you guys put up with. So let's go back to a real great American. Senator Cotton, the clip four. Let's listen to what he says again. I, like I said, I disagree with his comments. Uh, I would recommend that he... Uh, apologize and retract them and then get back to the campaign that he's been running on important issues like this Iran deal and the threat that it poses to the United States and the world. Bingo. End the story. That's the whole story. I take his opinion as gospel. That's Senator Cotton. He knows more than Trump about the military. How's that? That doesn't mean that Trump wouldn't be a good president if he won. I would still back him. Let me be very clear about that. As far as apologies, I'm not so sure. I don't think they work. All they do, do is marginalize the person. I've been smeared. They've said I said things that I didn't say. I know how it works. And then they tell you to apologize, and the minute you do, they fire you. Do you understand how that works? Or they sue you. Why, why do you think these civil rights activists always want someone to apologize? Then they get to sue you because you admitted you did something wrong. So, no, Trump should not apologize. But he was wrong in even innuendoing. There's no such word. In even innuendoing that McCain is not a war hero. I mean, when you've laid in a Vietnamese prison with those sadistic bastards who, have, who tortured him for five years, those sadistic bastards tortured him for five straight years, broke his bones. They're now our friends. You see that? Bush reopened uh, relations with Vietnam, didn't he? Sure he did. All the men died for nothing. Died in the rice paddies for nothing. Bush reopened it for the business deals. You know, I got to tell you something. The Vietnam War was all about commerce. It was a big lie about the domino theory that McNamara put out. Look how many people died. The Iraq War was a lie by Bush. Again, sort of the domino theory. And I predicted in 05 in my book, I told you the book. I'm not allowed to mention it. People get jealous and mad at me. I'm sorry I'm prolific. I'm sorry I'm prolific, and I'm sorry that I'm somewhat... Uh, Able, able to predict the future. I said that this war could turn out to be the greatest disaster in American military history because it turns out the big winner will be Iran. How? How did I figure that out? Because 24 million Shiites were subdued and repressed by the Sunni terrorist Saddam Hussein and his Republican Guard. They're now ISIS, by the way. And after we liberated them, what did the Shiites do for us? They didn't give us a drop of oil. They sold it to China. I'm not a big fan of uh, the, the Shiites in Iraq. They're not our allies at all. They're now part of the greater Iran. The ancient Persia has emerged. That's what I predicted. I ran into a military veteran in Delhi the, yesterday. I was buying sandwiches. I saw a stocky guy. Looks, he had a military posture. We started to kibitz. I'm an old New York kibitzer. That means the ability to talk to strangers without shame. On the West Coast, if you talk to a stranger, they blow a whistle and call the police. In San Francisco, if you discuss anything in front of these stiff morons out here, they, they get nervous. So he and I start to chat over the, uh, the sandwiches. I said, you're a military veteran? Yes. Did you serve in Iraq? Yes. How many did you? I said, I hope you killed a lot of the enemy. He said, I, really, the truth, we didn't belong there. I said, really, what's your opinion on that? He said, we really didn't belong there. I said, so here's another veteran who served who said we didn't even belong in Iraq. You hear this? Now another one said we didn't belong in Vietnam. See? So who's running the wars? Come on, baby, light my fire. Let's play that uh, Doors song. We're going to have Doors. We're going to have all of the other 60s songs. We're going to have a 60s party on the Savage Nation. Is that picture of McCain when he came back? He's a good-looking, skinny guy. From the Vietnam, the, the uh, terrible treatment. I could use a loss of 50 pounds right now. I would look as good as McCain did in his youth. I'll be right back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. My Which I wanted, but it's like LSD and... No, I don't go for it. Turn it off. It's slow. It's like from the era of sniffing glue and uh, you know, whatever, hairy underarms, patchouli oil, 
STDs originated mainly around that period of time. Free love led to free, uh, free STDs. Came with it. Free love uh, led right to the to the doctor's office. Why not do it in the road? Look what we have now. It led to this, the breakdown of America. What else is in there? It's horrible. Raining like crazy in L.A. I know it's global warming, right? First, the drought was global warming. Then the rain came, and like God said, all right, let me give them some rain just to show the people how stupid they are and have no control over the weather. Oh, they look up. They may as well do a rain dance in the U.N. I think the Pope, when he comes here, ought to do a rain dance with feathers in his fez. You know, as much sense as talking about global warming. It rained. It washed out a freeway. Heavy rain washed away part of California interstate. Severe flooding in California. I love it. So the plants are so happy. They don't know that it's because of a certain L-shaped hockey stick that it rained. They have no idea. It's called the weather idiots. The unpredictable weather morons. So they, but that's not the issue. Is there? It's Kerry, Iran nuclear deal, Trump, war hero. That's the whole story. Bill, KCMO, time for a quick call. 30 seconds, fire away. Hey, walking on the dock of the bay, and or sitting on the dock of the bay and uh, leaving on a jet plane, hanging on time for a fast train, Vietnam song. I remember him well. Yeah, there you see, those are the songs, Robert. He gave us a little song playlist. So who are you calling about, John Kerry, Vietnam vet? John Kerry is on the Hall of Heroes in uh, North Vietnam for his efforts, anti-American efforts in 73 against uh, USA and peace talks in Paris. That's right. John Kerry and Jane Fonda should have gotten married. It would have been the perfect marriage at the time. But she doesn't speak 18 languages in tongues like the wife does and didn't have a ketchup fortune. And her airplane runs on banana peels. Join the Savage Nation. Call now. 855-400-SAVAGE. Savage. That's John Roberts when he was a folk singer. Oh, it's John Denver. Sorry. I was never a fan of John Denver. He was a little too... Uh, but I never cared for that song, nor him. Here's, I love this song. Story. Chattanooga Gunmans. Chattanooga, don't you? The lead is not Muslim Gunmans. It's now Chattanooga. I just love it. It's not Muslim gunmen, it's not Islamic gunmen, it's now Chattanooga. Suddenly Chattanooga is the terrorist. Who writes this garbage? This is Fox News, no less, under the children. They threw out ales. The old man is, is drooling on himself. And the liberal children are running Fox News. Now it's Chattanooga gunmen's troubling spiral, fueled by drugs, booze, and jihad. Let me see if I can figure this out. Now let's see. <clears throat> the vice that uh, uh, the jihadists are permitted... Is murder? They're allowed to take drugs. They're allowed to take booze, and they're allowed to murder. That's in the. I thought that they can't use drugs and booze in Islam. So he used drugs and booze, <clears throat> and he still became a murdering piece of garbage. How is that possible? And the family is shocked. They're shocked. He was a troubled youth. The Muslim gunman who killed four Marines and a Navy sailor. Uh, straddled two worlds: smoking pot, drinking alcohol, and cage fighting while praying to Mecca daily and posting Islamic messages on the Internet. And the, the family is just shocked. They don't recognize the man. It's not their son. They have no idea. The family said in a statement crafted by a devious lawyer, quote, the person who committed this horrible crime was not the son we knew and loved. For many years, our son suffered from depression. It grieves us beyond belief to know that his pain found its expression in this heinous act of violence. You know, that family should should be investigated. I'm sorry. I don't believe a word of it. These writings are written by their lawyer, in my opinion. And for them to bring up that he's depressed and this and that, then why didn't they commit him to a nut house? And why did they send him to Jordan, by the way, where as a grandfather? By the way, he's not... See, here's another cover-up. He Remember they originally said he's Kuwaiti? Remember that? He's not Kuwaiti, he's Palestinian. That should tell you an awful lot since the sister's a radical Palestinian activist, which of course is in accord with Hillary Clinton and Bernie Sanders and the entire DNC, but that's nothing there. His father sent him to live with his grandfather in Jordan to get him away from American influences? Are you joking? Oh, it was, let's see, American influences were corrupting, but going to a jihadist grandfather in Jordan was not corrupting. Okay, you get the picture. Come on. 
So that's that's the Chattanooga story. Now we get back to the bigger story. Not this murderous piece of garbage. They should roll him in bacon fat, not give his body back to the family. What do you want to talk about? The Trump McCain dust up. That's a big deal. Okay, let's uh, start all over again. Let's reset. Let's have a Hillary Clinton reset moment. Let's go to clip one where there's a, a montage of repubes attacking Trump over the Cain comments. It's like Cain and Abel. We'll call Trump Abel and we'll call McCain Cain. Let's hear it. He's not a war hero. He's a war hero. He's a war Five hero. And a half years He's a war hero because he was captured. I like people that weren't captured, okay? I hate to tell you. <laughs> Do you He's agree with that? He's a war hero. Because he was captured. It's not just absurd. It's offensive. It's ridiculous. And, and I do think uh, it is a disqualifier as commander in chief. Until Mr. Trump apologizes directly to John McCain and also to the veterans of this country, I don't think he has the character or the temperament to hold the highest position in this country. On this, I think we should be united that, that uh, in the end, John McCain is indeed an American hero. And I think uh, Donald Trump owes him an apology. If you really want to be commander in chief oh, this one, and you're serious about that job, the last thing you would ever do is say Gina anything Lasso's. that would show disrespect for anybody who served. Well, I disagree with Mr. Trump's comments. John McCain is a great American. Everyone knows that he was a POW for over five years. So I think we all should respect and honor John McCain's right. service. Does John, Donald Trump owe you an apology? No, I don't think so, but I think he may owe an apology to the families oh, the uh, of those who have sacrificed in yeah. conflict and, uh, and those who have uh, undergone the prison Gosh, experience. Come on, McCain, uh, get off the stage already, you old war horse. You're like a 68 Buick that, that blew eight cylinders a long time ago. They tried to rebuild you and they couldn't. This guy's like a 68 Buick and a big engine in it. The, 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 the cylinder heads blew. They put the, the wrong gaskets in this guy. Well, I must say, whoever he's seeing as a doctor, I, is doing a very good job on, on uh, titrating his medication now. He's modest. He hasn't tried to start a world war in about three minutes. Last year, he tried to set Egypt on fire. Then he tried to set Ukraine on fire. They called him back and they said, look, stop hitting your wife's medicine cabinet. And they found out that he must have been hitting the cabinet there. And he was using the wrong, took the wrong meds. He tried to start World War III as, as often as possible. He sounds much more moderate <laughs> right now. He really does. But what a terrible senator he is. But, you know, they're going to use it to smear Trump no matter what happens. So he went on uh, the Today Show today. Won't come on the Savage Nation anymore. And he attacked Matt Lyer, uh, whatever his name is, Matt Lyer, I think. Another great American. I think Matt Lyer is a, a great American. Isn't he a great American? Another great American. Katie Couric and him were, were always great Americans. Andrea Mitchell's a great American. Anyone in the media is a great American. You're a great American. No, you're a great American. No, sir, I take my hat off to you. You're a great American. No, you're a great American. Hey, can I get in that slumlord thing in Atlanta? No, you're a great American, but I won't let you in on my scam. No. Uh, let's hear clip two now of Trump. These comments that you made about John McCain, it seems to me this is part of some personal resentment you have against John McCain and perhaps he has for you. This is a feud that's boiled over into a war of words and it's less about how you would define a war hero. Is that fair? Well, I'm not a fan of John McCain. He's done a terrible job for the vets. I go around, Matt, on the circuit, and I'm seeing so many vets, and I see families crying before me. They can't see doctors. They're waiting in reception rooms for five and six days. Right, but still, you're talking about his record on doctors. Veterans Affairs now, and well, I'm talking I'm, about I'm your saying, comments he, you made about his, his no, war service. No, I'm saying that John McCain has done a horrible job. The VA is a scandalous, uh, corrupt organization. It's a disgrace the way it's being run, and, and the veterans of this country are suffering. With that being said, if you saw what I said and if you saw the press conference afterwards, Savannah and the media just has done such a false number, as usual. In fact, because you're the media and you do the same thing, the next sentence was, he is a war hero. I said that, but they never want to play it, and you don't want to play well, it. Why, would you, you why would you say the first thing? Why would you say the first part? 
Savannah started it off by saying, I said that he wasn't a war hero. I didn't say that. And if you would have let it run just another three seconds, you would have said that I, saw, I said very clearly he is a war hero. I have absolutely no problem with that. What I do have problems with is that he called 15,000 people that showed up for me to speak in Phoenix. He called them crazies because they want to stop illegal immigration let and they were just, insulted. Let me and they say were for great the record. Americans. Let and me say for the record, we did the run best. the other part of your comments, Mr. Trump. We did run the part where you said he is a war hero. So please, please don't say that we didn't because we did. Well, then why did, why did Savannah start off by saying I said that he was not a war hero? I never said that. I said he was a war hero, Matt. Let, so you misrepresent just like everybody else. No kidding. How do you think he makes around $1,200 a week? How else can Matt Lauer make $60,000 a year other than by lying for NBC? He, if, if he wasn't a liar and a skilled at it at that, uh, with his looks, he's making 1200 a week working for NBC. The most he could do is work at Carvel on, in Far Rockaway. He makes a good living at 1200 bucks a week. How could he do it other than by lying about conservatives? So have we covered the Trump-McCain thing, the McTrump thing? Should we just call him McTrump and move on? <laughs> it's terrible that he's now wrapped around McCain, who was the worst person in the history of the U.S. Senate next to Barbara Boxer, Dianne Feinstein, and 15 others. Uh, John McCain, I'm not a hero. Yeah, he's playing the high road now. Kerry defends our nuclear deal. Kerry should be given the uh, anti-Nobel Prize for what he just did. How could you get a Nobel Prize for giving Iran a, nuclear, a path to a nuclear weapon? Seems the Democrats want to give illegal aliens from Mexico and everywhere else a path to citizenship, and they want to give the Iranians a path to a nuclear weapon. How does that work? They don't want to give us a path to our democracy, that's for sure. Anyway, where is Mrs. Kerry? I miss her. Uh, Sherry Kynes Ketchup. Uh, Heinz Ketchup. Sherry Heinz Kerry. I don't know her name. She was a kick a couple of years ago. They dummied her up. I don't know where she is. I mean, I was praying that when he became prominent, she'd be giving us more speeches about a continental language. Remember those speeches? Incoherent, rambling in four languages at once. It was, she's a brilliant woman. Uh, problem is, when you speak in four languages at once, you borderline into schizo. You start to speak in French, Portuguese, Spanish, and English, and no one knows what you're saying. I don't know where that comes from. It's from all the years in the girls' boarding schools where they all wanted to sound like they were high class to marry someone richer than their father. In her case, she married down. <laughs> I mean, you think about it, Heinz Kerry married down. She didn't marry up. He married up. He married up. Look, look how well he's doing. Yeah, okay, that's the world we live in. All we have left is ridicule. There's nothing left. There's no vote, no democracy, nothing. And it's just beginning. Oh, he's going in for the kill. Yeah, the real, the real devil is going to go in for the kill. God knows what he's going to do next. And look at the headline of Fox News, calling it quits. Shelton and Lambert confirmed divorce. I don't know who they are. I never heard of them. I never saw, I never heard of them. Why is that headline? Country music megastars Blake Shelton and Miranda Lambert confirmed they're divorcing after four years of marriage. You know, I just can't eat lunch now. I'm going to have to just tell Ryan not to bring me my lunch. I am so heartbroken. Now I just can't eat my lunch. I feel terrible. Terrible. Undone nuke deal question mark. Iran rips U.S. envoy after Security Council OK's deal. The Iranians are slime. They got everything, gave back nothing, and now the, the, the Security Council OK's the deal and that piece of slime attacks the U.S. envoy. L look who we're dealing with. These are the worst people on the, in, the, in the planet. Attila the Hun and the Iranians would be very friendly with each other. UN Security Council endorses Iran deal. A second later, the Iranian throwback lashes out at the U.S. You hear what he said? I can't believe this. Iran's so-called ambassador, a throwback, lashed out at the U.S. moments after the vote. And he said horrible things. And he talks about America in the most negative way, calls us extremist, attacks the U.S., then attacks Israel. You hear this is who they're giving a weapon to. This is why your president did an end run around Congress and went to the U.N. You didn't even know about that, right? Even the top Democrat on the Senate so-called Foreign Relations Committee, Senator Ben Cardin, said, I don't know why they're going to the U.N. first. Hey, Ben, 
uh, w- wake up and smell the incense. The reason they're going to the U.N. first is because Obama would be very comfortable in a fez after he leaves his job. In fact, he probably become a, he could become the Iran supreme ruler after this. The old man's not going to live forever over there. They give him a fez, he can go over there. He lived like a, like a, finally lived like a king. He can't sleep on a gold bed here in the, the White House. You know that the Saudi royal family sleeps on a gold bed? Did you know that? I don't. You people don't even know that. I learned from an inside source that I can't disclose. I can never disclose my sources. Do you know that the Saudi royal, well, the the king, has to sleep on gold according to their beliefs? Gold, a gold bed. You talk about a hard bed. I mean, it can have a mattress and an inner spring, but it has to be gold because they are the. He's the king. So, like, if he has a son here in America living somewhere in, uh, let's say, Brooklyn. He wouldn't live in Brooklyn. I'm giving the cover up where he lives. Because the old man is old, and because the son might become the king, they had to install a gold wall and a gold bed in his house. Do you? Can you believe this? You don't know these things. The great Americans don't know it either. The ones who are building shanty little houses on beaches. They put in, like, a drywall. I'll bet you that the other one, the, the slumlord, got him a discount on drywall, come to think of it. Because he was a drywaller before he, before he went into radio. He was, the, he was a hammer job, a nail gun. So, yeah, he must have gotten him a discount on the beach house for the, uh, for the cheap drywall from China. Because if you've got 18,000 slum apartments and you can get drywall cheap, why not give it to another great American for a beach house? I'll be right back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. My Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com. It's the only company I trust to protect my wealth. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O-I-N. It was so cool with the leather pants and the hats, all the junkies, all the talented junkies with guitars. They misled an entire generation, and they gave us Obama. Now, you talk about disrespecting the military. Do you know who should be called on a carpet for disrespecting the military? You know who's not a hero? You know who just spit in the face of the military? Your communist president. Your communist president has not given an order to fly all U.S. flags at half-staff in honor of the five service members assassinated by the Muslim bastard in Chattanooga last week. Sorry for using the word that I just used, but it's actually not a dirty word at all. He is a bastard. He killed those men. And here we have a president who has no respect for the military by declining to order that U.S. flags at the White House and other public buildings be flown at half staff. He won't do it. Why? Why won't he do it? He invited the family of a traitor named Bergdahl To the Rose Garden, remember that weird ceremony when Bergdahl's father spoke in Arabic and we said he must be a jihadi or a a convert? And it's, oh, no, no, not at all. To the Rose Garden, the father, the mother of a traitor, Bergdahl, to the White House, to the Rose Garden, has not called out the terrorists to shut up to a recruiting station. No flag lowering. How come? Because he hates America, he hates the military. So if you're going to start talking about who, who, who disrespected the military with all of your snide liberal friends, ask him why your president, their president rather, has not ordered flags be flown in half staff for the dead Marines. It's because he's playing for the other team. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE. Savage. Warning, the Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation, home of unprotected talk, borders, language, culture. And here he is, Michael Savage. The age of the uh, stingray. It's the age of Nam. It's the age of patchouli oil, no braziers, hairy underarms, STDs. It's the age of young men dying for the old man's war. 
Yes. It's the age of John McCain accidentally setting off a Zuni rocket on the deck of the aircraft carrier USS Forresto, killing and injuring many, almost sinking the aircraft carrier. It was an accident. Hit the wrong button. That's all. Not his fault. He got sublunged in the, in the jet. Got mixed up and hit the wrong button. A, a, a rocket went off. He almost sank the ship. Horrible situation. The ship almost went down. And, uh, you know, he did fly in Vietnam. He is a hero. He did get shot down. The Vietnamese tried to kill him in the pond. And one Vietnamese gentleman saved him, by the way. Oh, that's a secondary story that came out over the weekend. Was it not for this one Vietnamese villager who ran out and saved his skin? The others would have beaten him to death. And here's the, here's the terrible thing about that. Years later, he never acknowledged the guy who saved him, even though it was known who did it. He won a little medal for it. Yeah, you know, awful seeing the the guy broke died brokenhearted. That McCain, when he came to Vietnam during reconciliation talks, did not visit him, even though he saved his life. Can you believe that? All right, it's an oversight. I mean, it's very it's common that people get saved every day of their life after being shot down in a fighter jet. It's a common occurrence, Robert. Isn't it? It happens in everyone's life? It's not something you'd remember. It'd be like a bus driver who said hello. That's all. So McCain forgot it. Just another bus driver who saved him. So that's a side story, but he was a hero. He was tortured by those those little devils. They tortured him for five years. And McCain uh, comes from a distinguished military family. The father was Admiral McCain. You don't know this, but the grandfather was uh, a, a great admiral as well. Great admiral. He was the black sheep of the family, McCain. Last in his class at Annapolis. Again, he's still a war hero. He flew in combat and he got shot down. That's a war hero. He just was a, a, a lousy, horrible, double-talking, backstabbing senator. He opened our borders with Mexico. He undermined the Tea Party. Almost started a war with Russia. Almost overthrew the uh, legitimate government of Egypt to reinst reinstall the Muslim Brotherhood. I mean, this guy's a nut. But McTrump is the issue now. They're saying he said this. He didn't say it. I almost said it. I could have said it. You thought I said it, I said it, but didn't, I modified it, although I said it in the beginning of the sentence, at the end I said he was a hero, at the beginning I said he was a schmendrick, at the end I said he was a great man, I didn't say it, you said it, he said it, you didn't listen, you didn't run the whole thing, a part of the thing, you ran only the part of it, I was misquoted, he quoted, you quoted, you misinterpreted, I didn't say it, he did say it, he is a McCain, it's one of those things, that's not the issue, the issue is the double-talking thief, oh God, I'm tired already, I, I'm not tired of it. Two and a half million illegals arrive under Obama. 400,000 a year. 100,000 Muslims a year. 100,000 Muslims a year. And the murderer in Chattanooga, Muhammad, a drug addict, a druggie. Now, I don't understand this part of it. He can't use drugs according to his religion nor alcohol, but he was a heavy drug and alcohol abuser and a murderer. How does that figure? Oh, I see. He had PTSD from living in America. He had a hostile work environment. American fact is considered hostile to this type of Muslim. See, you don't, don't understand something. When they come here from their pure, pristine nations where women are mutilated, uh, women are raped, go down the list. This is an affront to them to see women walking around in jeans, free as a bird. It affr it's an affront to them to see homosexuals holding hands in the street. And it gives some of them PTSD. So, in other words, it's a psychological uh, uh, misfit. So the answer is, of course, to bring more of them in and convert America to Sharia law so everyone's happy. It's not to stop bringing them in, right? That would be too logical for Obama. All right, that's enough sarcasm for the day. That's all. So Iran got what they wanted. Six world powers agreed on the nukes for, for, uh, for uh, Tehran. And a minute later... They attacked the United States of America verbally and said we will trample upon America two seconds later. And Mr. Ketchup is still in favor of the deal. Yeah, Mr. Ketchup is still saying we'll prevent nuclear war. You hear this? A second after they got the approval in the U.N., even though I haven't gone to the, ma the, 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 uh, the mannequins in, in Congress. Congress. You say, oh, he's a congressman. Really? No kidding. Really? Oh, look at that. When I was a kid in New York... If someone was a con even an assemblyman had a tag on his license on the back of his bumper, it was a big deal because I was poor. So anyone with a political power in New York was, you know, they can get you a job in the post office or whatever. 
They can get you into the, uh, I, I don't know what they could do, but the, the low-ranking assemblyman in New York, they had in the back of their bumper like a thing that went up with a plaque that said Assemblyman District 4030209 in Brooklyn, whatever it said. Then they would put like a leather cover over it when they were uh, basically getting free drinks and free dinners in Italian restaurants after work. And the, the bodyguards, now it's, it means nothing. It's, no, it's like a taxi medallion. U.S. Senator, a guy who had a taxi medallion had more respect in New York until Uber came along. <laughs> they, those medallions were up to a million bucks a piece. They're worth nothing. No, when I was a kid, if a guy had three taxi medallions, we looked up to him. Whoa, look at you know, he's a hacky. And really? He owns three medallions. They're worth 40000 a piece. I'm talking in the old days. They were considered rich to our class of people. All of a sudden, the guy could own 10 of them. Now he's worth, he's worth less than uh, zero. Because Uber came. Who invented Uber? That guy's smart. Where is he, from Iran? Who was it? Some Iranian came in, I think, and did Uber. No, I don't know who did it. Smart guy. I mean, he figured out how to break the monopoly so he could drive every taxi driver in the world out of business. Great, great uh, Wild West situation. Well, but it's it's uh, it's the web, so it's good. It's web-based. Anything web-based is good. Executions on the web would be acceptable if it was a dot-com. If it was uh, execution.com, I guarantee you that Zuckerberg would invest in it. He'd try to buy them out for $13 million a second. They come up with things that make no money. They're worth hundreds of millions of dollars the next day, and these snot noses, they buy houses in San Francisco. I don't even know what they're doing with the houses. Meanwhile, they're in favor of more illegal aliens. They know one thing. There's global warming, and illegal aliens are good. White men are bad, even though they're all white men. White privilege is bad, even though they all have white privilege. They don't, ha they don't hire any minorities. They have no minorities on their boards of directors, but they're all flaming progressives like Barbara Boxer and Feinstein. When has Feinstein last had a person of color to dinner uh, on Pacific Heights? When has Boxer had a person of color over to her house in the last 400 years that she's been in the Senate? Never, never. But she's a progressive, don't you know? So that's the story of the day. It's just the Trump thing, the McTrump story. Who's a hero? He's a hero. I'm a hero. Not a hero. You're a hero. I'm sorry. The only heroes are combat veterans that, you know, you ask a Vietnam vet what they think. Well, I have one on the line, Eddie, on KVOR. Go ahead. Who's a hero out there, Eddie? Hello, Dr. Savage. Thank you for taking my call. I wanted to talk about the hypocrisy of the left once again. <clears throat> They're all so outraged that Trump called McCain or said that he wasn't a hero or lead it to that. I'm a Vietnam veteran. You know what they called me, those liberal media and all the liberals? When I came home from Vietnam, they called me a baby killer, a warmonger, a hater, a killer. And now all of a sudden they're wrapping themselves in the flag. Don't you love it? Now all of a sudden, yeah, they wrap themselves in the flag, and they're so outraged that somebody said John McCain is not. A well, because John McCain is one of them. He's been pushing progressive policies for a good long time, going on 10 years now, so he's a darling of the, of the anti-war protesters. And, we know and look, he almost, started, he almost started a war with Russia. He almost uh, uh, permitted the Muslim Brotherhood to take over Egypt. He is one of them. Right, and now what they want to do is redefine the word hero. I don't well, if I'm you can say Caitlyn Jenner is a hero, I guess you can say that anyone's a hero. Well, I went to Vietnam, and I didn't consider myself a hero. I went, I came back. I came back alive, and I was lucky. I was happy, and thank God for that. But, you know, Eddie, guys I know who fought in war, whatever the wars are, usually will say very humbly that the only heroes are buried in the veteran cemeteries. Isn't that a common saying amongst true combat veterans? Yes, it is. And yes, and you see, this is something that is missed, and, you know, you really should remember that. You ask real veterans who fought in combat, and they would tell you that the only real heroes are those buried in, in, in veteran cemeteries or who, those whose remains you couldn't even find. Exactly. So let's not, let's not have the liberals redefine what a hero is. I heard somebody the other day say, anybody who joined the service is a hero. Come on, are you kidding me? I come back from the war, they tell me I'm a, a killer and a baby killer? I don't think, uh, I don't think that... How do you hero. feel about a talk show? How do you feel about a talk show that never served in combat, talking to another talk show saying you're a great American? Does that, does that strike you as odd? No, it does not. I, and, and I tell other people they're great Americans as well. And oh, my, so they are great Americans. So I'm not a great American because no one calls me that? 
you're a great American, and on my list, you're number one on that list. All right. Well, all right. I'll accept it then, because I don't understand. It sounds like such garbage to me for these people to call themselves. How could you call yourself a great American? <laughs> That's something someone else has to do, Eddie. Exactly. But they call each other great American. Hello, great American. How are you today? I'm okay, great American. How are you? Not so good. I didn't go to the bathroom. I tried. But it was bad because I ate hamburgers last night. And you, nah, the corned beef and cabbage wasn't bad. Went right through. I mean, come on. All right, Eddie, thanks for the call. Um, look, it's just a little friendly, you know, criticism here. Look, I mean, we've got to straighten each other out, don't we? That's mild compared to the lies that they spin about me out of jealousy because they have no talent. What do you want to talk about, the, the McTrump deal or the Kerry selling America out? Oh, hell, let's start with one that will get your, your, get your goat. Here is your president, a real great American. Well, to the, to the Iranians, he's a great Iranian. So, wait a minute, let's call Obama a great Iranian from now on, Robert. I think that works. Here is the... Oh, we're about to play clip 26, listening to the great Iranian, Barack. Um, who's that woman who works for... Uh, wait, don't tell me. I want to see if the memory's still working after what I've been through today with the technology breakdowns. Oh, Jared. Huh? The great Iranian, Obama Jarrett, on the UN passing approval of his pathway to a nuclear bomb for Iran in 26. The overwhelming number of countries who not only participated in the deal, uh, the P5 plus one, but uh, who uh, have observed what's happened, recognize that uh, this is uh, by far uh, our strongest approach to ensuring yeah, that Iran does not get, get on with already, yeah. uh, There is broad international consensus around this issue, uh, not just uh, among uh, the right, international so no, I can't community, but also this. among... Please, he's starting to sound like a among. Did he say I'm an Hmong? Oh, he said Hmong. The guy did such a BS job. He's a great Iranian, Obama. Uh, the fact of the matter is he should have gone to Congress, but hey, what's Congress to a guy like him? He's so much better than everybody else. Because since, he, since he's a great Iranian, and a second after he got what he wanted at the UN, they uh, said that they're going to wipe America off the planet and wish us death to America. Ask the great Iranian, Obama, what he thinks about that 10 seconds later. I'll be right back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. The Savage Nation is sponsored by Swiss America, the only company I trust with my financial future. Call 800-289-2646 or SwissAmerica.com. 60s music in honor of John McCain's uh, service to America. And I do a free association when I hear this music, and all I can think of is body paint. Patchouli oil and chlamydia. I don't know why it is. Only a psychiatrist can tell you the answer to that. It's a, it's a pastiche in my head. So Trump's uh, doing great. Because McCain's hated by conservatives. He's a phony, a warmonger, a double talker, a liberal through and through, a two-faced. And no matter what Trump said about him, people would rather have Trump than, than McCain, who's destroyed the entire, the entire southern border. So what, what's the big deal? Let's say Trump didn't say it, he did say it, he almost said it, he modified it, he didn't modify it, he almost modified it. If you listen to the whole thing, he didn't, he said he's a hero, he wasn't, he was, he is, he likes him. If they don't get shot, that's a what? He doesn't owe anyone an apology, especially that war horse. McCain should have retired 10 years ago and moved to Tibet to the Buick dealership I suggested he and his wife get. They should have bought a Buick dealership before it took off in, in Tibet. What China? They love the Buick over there. They all look like my uh, my old relatives, and I don't know how that is. No one looks like my relatives in New York anymore, except in Tibet, and I'm not even from Tibet. If you were to take the clothing off them in, in Tibet, <laughs> they look like my relatives sitting around my dinner table. How is that? Maybe there's some Tibetan. I don't know. I don't like mutton. Then they eat mutton. I think they slaughter the the yaks, yaks hairy, and they make like a rug out of it, a rug out of the fur. I feel bad for animals. They all want to live. Everything's like, come on, man. Kill the other one. That's what the dog gets away with. He just cons you. I'm smart. Don't kill me. I'm not like the others. I'm not one of the lower creatures. Don't confuse me with a dumb cow. Go in the field there. Slaughter that thing. Mmm. The dog looks at you. All it does is roll. A cow can't roll over. It's so fat. A dog rolls over. You want to pet it. You're not going to kill it unless you're from South Korea. Then you eat it while you're petting it. That's all. You eat it while you beat it with a stick. I mean, you pet it or beat it with a stick, and then you eat it in South Korea. 
Wonderful culture. They're our friends, you hear? North Korea is bad, but the South Koreans beat dogs alive and eat them. Not all. Come on, I'm saying, but it's it should be stopped. So here we are. Donald Trump ignited a political furor, and now he has up in the polls, anyone, because everyone wants a real man. Everyone says a slip of the tongue. You don't kill him for that. What you do is you focus on Obama not ordering flags at half-staff for the dead Marines last week. What you do is you focus on President uh, the, President Obama, the Iranian fellow traveler, who, I mean, go down the litany. The litany, no, no, no flags at half-staff, no letters to the families, no mention of a Muslim killer. You can't put three and four together and come up with seven, can you? No, you can't put two and two together. Instead, it's Trump, 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 Trump. I'm for Trump. Until I found it otherwise. If he goes third party, I'm not for Trump. Then he's a spoiler. He was on the show. He said he wouldn't do it. Then a week ago, he said he would. That's what worries me more than anything. Forget what he said. I like Donald Trump. I hope he sticks to his guns, and I hope he wins. That's what I hope. That's all. We'll see. We'll see. Join the Savage Nation. Call now. 855-400-SAVAGE. 855-400-7282. Savage. We're celebrating the young John McCain today on the Savage Nation. Period music that he missed uh, while in captivity. I don't feel bad. I really don't know what it's like. The old Buddy Hackett joke is something is wrong. The worse Obama gets, it's not that the better I feel, but I feel good because I don't care about him anymore. I've decided he's a traitor. I've decided that if we had a legitimate government, he would have been impeached literally five years ago for what he was doing, spying on us. Now they got the racial spies out there. Deal with Iran, fast track to the nukes, fast track to citizenship. Since I know I'm powerless, I feel liberated. So I, uh, you understand what I'm saying? You get that there's a certain liberation in knowing your country's been taken over and infiltrated. Now all you do is lock and load. Since the government can't protect you, you better protect yourself. And by the way, all of you idiots out there, all of you morons out there, all of you slaves out there, listen carefully, very carefully. Because what I'm about to say to you has never been said in the history of talk radio, ever, by anybody, so far as I know. But I may not have said that. Someone may have said it. You could have misinterpreted what I just said. Here's the thing. It's a simple fact. There's a difference between loving your country and loving your government. I despise my government and I love my country. Now put that in your hash pipe and smoke it. I love my country and I despise my government. You got that? This government is not of the people, by the people, and for the people. It's a government of, well, you fill it in. I'm sitting here drinking my Nespresso, my Dulceo from Do Brasil. It's a good one. It's actually the best to blend. My uh, son brought it. He said that's the best. We argued over this, too. I lo You know, that's the beauty of family. You can argue over everything. Which do you like best of the 5,000 flavors in espresso? I'll say this. No, no. The, they'll say they'll, they'll say, oh. Then you say, I like it. Don't say, I really didn't like it. I like the other one better. That's what makes family life, <laughs> life interesting. <laughs> you, could argue over, you could argue over the currents in the Atlantic Ocean if you want. It's why I'm a loner today with the dog. You don't argue. That's, that's how dogs survive. They don't argue with you. Of course, they don't have the ability. But you think if you think about it, when they were being made by God or by evolution, they probably said, you know what, don't give us speech. Because we got it pretty good what's going on now. Once the minute we talk, we're going to get into arguments with the owners. They're liable to put us in the category of a, of a, of a, uh, a, a cow. We're doing pretty good. I love it all the languages. This reminds me, when I read the package on Nespresso, pure Arabica, pure Arabica, do seo do Brazil, es in Dalicia. They'll say, oh, they'll proceed, and then in German, then in Portuguese. It reminds me of, of Heinz Carey, the wife. She could have written this jacket copy, when you think about it. That, is she writing jacket copy for Nespresso now because she's not been heard of? They dummied her up pretty good. Where is she? When she do you remember those speeches she used to give? Robert, come on. Do you remember the days that she'd speak, Heinz Carey, Carey's wife? Yeah, once he became a big shot, uh, they, they pushed her out of the picture. I don't know where she is. She's probably running. I don't know where she is. But she used to speak in so many beautiful tongues at once. Portuguese. I'd love you to get that thing for today. It used to have it in the, in the uh, archives. I don't think we have it once we switch to the new studio. Uh, Ted Cruz won't join in the Trump bash, and good for him. I like Cruz a lot. Going nowhere. He'd be a good vice president for Trump. Trump Cruz or Trump, uh, that guy with the... 
I see that's the thing. I can't remember his name. The African-American doc. Carson. Trump Carson. Carson is a great doctor, you know, but too soft-spoken for the world that we that we, we need someone to really go out there and get vicious. This is why Trump should win. We need a, we need a vicious businessman who always gets his way to negotiate for us. What do we want, Mr. Polite? A, 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 a dummy like, like uh, what's his name? What's his name, that guy, that tall one who I had dinner with? 80, I told you 80 times. I'm proud of it. I don't remember his name. He's, uh, he's forgettable immediately. Romney, Romney, Romney. I had dinner with him years ago. I, I'm, I'm proud of it. I boast about it. He's the only potential presidential candidate that would ever come near me. After that, I never heard from any of them again. They all have the same advisor, McCain, Kerry. I don't care who they are. I wouldn't be surprised if Trump's not using the same company now. They all wind up using the same conglomeration. It tells them the same thing. Don't go near Michael Savage. Don't talk to his audience. So I get to ridicule them. That's all. They lose anyway. They'd be smarter to come on the show. You do vote. You know, it's like I print up a bumper sticker. I'm a Savage Nation listener and I vote. Contento. Ten capsules. Do Sao de Brazil. Do Cafe. Contents. And again in six languages. Do Sao de Brazil. The Hebrew. They even have it in the Hebrew, which is interesting because you think, oh, they're going to boycott it. Maybe it's a Jewish product. It, it, I thought it was a, like a Portuguese product. Where is this product made? Arabic? You know, the, the Arabs brought coffee into the Western world. Many people don't know that. You don't know that. Yeah, Cafe Arabica, look it up. They picked the beans in Ethiopia in the trees. Then a guy dropped it in the water by accident. And the next thing you know, he drank the water because he was parched. He couldn't get any more clean water. Said to his wife, you don't have any clean water? Beat her up, beat up the whole family, burnt down the village. And he said, all right, give me that dirty water that the green beans fell in after he beat up the family and burnt the village down. You know the way it's done in Somalia. You know, nice, pleasant folks. He drank the water in which the green coffee beans had fallen, and he got high on it. So, whoa, that dirty water is good, man. That, that green water is sure good. That's the origin of coffee. Cafe Arabica. It's, 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 I mean, I made up how it happened, but... You know, sort of. It was by accident. Trial and error. Could have been done another way. You know, like some smart chemist was dipping the things in water and tried them. I doubt it. Probably closer to what I came up with. The guy was parched and drank the dirty green water and got high on it. Coffee's a great high, I got to tell you, if it's done right. Well, it's not just the caffeine in coffee. It's like cocaine and coca, coca leaves. If you figure out that the, the, the Peruvians use coca leaves, they don't use cocaine... And there's 16 or 17 alkaloids in a coca leaf, knowing this going back to my pharmacology in the 60s. Cocaine is only one of 16 alkaloids found in the coca leaf. So when they chew the whole leaf, they're getting not just cocaine, but it is ameliorated, big word, ameliorated, ameliorated by the other alkaloids and saccharides and other compounds in the leaf. And so it's a different stimulation than extracted cocaine. It's the same with coffee. In other words, you could just take caffeine tablets and you're going to wind up like Abazubazabazibazad on coke and heroin and hash. You can get crazy from it. That's why I like natural products. I like, I like coffee for that reason. What were we talking about before I got sidetracked? McTrump, McTrump, Kerry, McTrump, Hillary, ugh, her again? I have such distaste. What? Okay, let's do a Hillary shot. A 25er. Listen to this, or another winner, listen to this one. We're not going back to denying climate change. If you ask most of these Republican candidates about that, they'll say, sorry, I'm not a scientist. Well, then why don't they start listening to those who are scientists? Look, I'm not a scientist either. I'm just a grandmother with two eyes and a brain, and I'm not going to let them take us backwards. Oh, you demagogue, you, you low-life demagogue, you lying through and through. What a liar. What does she know? What does she know except greed and aggression? With those stare, that eye stare. I read a book the other day. I found I was going through my archives. It's a good day. I'm like doing a lot of free association today because I feel good. My brain is working. Here's how you could tell if I'm happy or sad. Uh, when I'm doing a lot of free association during a show and you're still listening because you're enjoying it, I'm happy. When I'm doing no free association, I'm just like two-dimensional, I sound like everyone else in radio, one or two-dimensional, I'm unhappy, I'm miserable. My, my th tongue, I can't function. 
I don't want to live, let alone talk. Today I feel good because I was with my family all weekend. We argued for 48 straight hours. What could be better? It's liberating. It's, it's liberating to not argue with yourself. Take it out on others. God, that's awful. That's not fair. No, that's psychotic, I think, when you think about that. No, why do I, I don't know why I feel good. There's no explanation. Nothing is true. No, because I, I know why. Because yesterday here in Marin County, I had such a beautiful day. I avoid. Oh, can, let me start with the weekend. I got a minute to give you my uh, weekend in the life of Michael Savage. Friday after the show, I went up to North Beach, San Francisco, went to my friend's restaurant, Pinocchio, my favorite Italian restaurant. I, I happen to really like the owner, Giovanni. He and I get along great. We just get along. Okay, we hit it off and his wife. And we wound up, I, I wasn't drinking. I was into like, I don't want to drink today. It was hot. It's getting hot. Now it's like Hawaii here now. Humid, horrible weather. Disgusting. It was already getting warm. It's one of those Fellini nights in North Beach where you feel like you're in a mark cord. Those of you who live in San Francisco know what I'm talking about. I've written about it in all my novels about the color of the water, how it changes when, when the temperature gets warm. Not to do with global warming, Hillary. It's what happens when it gets hot. You know what I'm saying? Schmendrick. Anyway, go up there, not drinking. So when I'm not drinking and the guy owns a restaurant, he wants to give me a drink, I, I drink like soda water. I always ask for like a, you know, a club soda, whatever. That's what I was drinking. That, that didn't go on too long. I could only hold out for about an hour because I, I won't drink before 5 o'clock. But as they say, it's 5 o'clock somewhere. Anyway, I didn't drink. I had the club soda and I'm, sh you know, shooting the... And he, he's in a, in a white outfit. He was cooking. He went back to being a chef. He's going to get a TV show or something. But I like that. I wanted to, like, work with him, chop garlic, and be on the TV show. Even though I'm a big radio star, I think I should do a cooking show. So he's got the apron and the white, the this and the that, and the Mexican cooks are there, and he's digging it. And, he's, and I'm, no one was in the restaurant yet. It was, like, dead zone, 4 o'clock, whatever. So I started to, like, eat the olives. It was, like, black Sicilian olives, pitless, because you can break your tooth otherwise olives and this and the bread he made me eat bread and cut the bread that made me put the bread out you know they're cordial guys different world and uh eating bread and shooting the breeze then i had a drink and before long i had another drink and then i ate outside on the table on columbus avenue with him and his lovely wife maria and i ate very light i wasn't in an eating mood i just wanted to just sit there and enjoy the people going by i heard the church bells go off at the church across from the cafe where all the communist the losers on SDSI sit for 39 years, the Cafe Trieste. I forget the church. I don't know that church. The Peter and Paul is the other one where Marilyn Monroe married the Joe, Joe DiMaggio. This one I don't remember the name of, but they put gates finally in front of the church a few years ago because the bums were defecating on the doorstep. The, the bums in North Beach, that's where they used to go to you relieve themselves at the church. You hear this? Filth, garbage. So it's nice. It's clean there now. Church wood bells were going off. The sun was falling down south of Market. About to light up in the East Bay, the uh, the Mormon Hotel, the Marriott, the last building. You know about that? If you live in the Bay Area, the last building to be lit up as the sun falls is the Marriott Hotel. You don't know that. They designed it. They're smart, the Mormons. They made it so it catches the sun like an obelisk. And the last thing you see reflecting as the sun falls is the top of the Marriott. Amazing how smart people can be. And then, that was, that was Friday night, that's just a starter. He had a visiting young man from Sicily. Listen to this, I'm not going to mention names. And we're talking, and the guy, young man speaks good language, and he said, I'm here in America because there are no opportunities for me in Sicily. I said, what do you mean? He said, there are no jobs. He said, all of my friends do nothing all day long. He was in his young 20s. He's here in college. He said, there's no jobs, no future. He said, I had to leave my family. It was like emigration all over again. So why isn't Obama bringing in Italians? What is he bringing in Ethiopians for or Somalis who are Muslims? Why? Why doesn't he give green cards to Sicilian young men? I ask myself. So I said, wait a minute. No, he's a terrible economy. And, uh, he's, I, and I talk about refugees. They're being flooded by African refugees in Sicily. I said, what's wrong with your country? He said it used to be a very conservative country. It's been taken over by, quote, humanitarians who put out the welcome mat for the Africans who come there and live on welfare and take the few jobs that are left in the country. I said, oh, my God, it's like a repeat of what's going on in America. The whole West is being destroyed by liberalism. See, wherever you turn, no matter who you talk to, if you have a mind, you can learn. But most of you don't want to learn. 
I, most of you have a minds that are made up. I listen and I learn. I listen to people. So that was Friday night when it gets even better. Maybe I'll get back to McCain and Obama and Samantha Powers and Ted Cruz and Netanyahu and Kerry and Hillary. Oh, God, I'll, I don't know what I'm going to talk about, but I'll be back to do it. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Hey, our Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com. The only company I trust for wealth insurance, gold and silver. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O-I-N. I hated the 60s. I was out of step with the 60s. I didn't fit in. I tried to fit in. I couldn't. It's like everybody wanted to be a Beatle. I, I just, it wasn't me. I was torn between being a dentist and a Beatle, and I couldn't make it in either. You know, it's like, I didn't really want to stick my face into people's mouths and smell bad breath the rest of my life, so I skipped dental school. Then I couldn't make it as a hippie because it was disgusting. They all died of disease anyway. All became lifetime Democrat. Uh, uh, oh, they're progressives. Yeah. They don't even know what the word means. I got a treat for you that you're not going to believe. We've been asking where uh, Kerry's wife has been since he became a big shot diplomat with the tie and the ring and the watch. How he looks, you know, everything perfect, selling America out to Iran, telling us he isn't. Here is the old Teresa Hines Kerry. If only she'd come back on the public scene. We'd be talking about her instead of Trump. Let's hear it. Tonight, as I have done throughout yeah. this campaign, oh God. I would like to speak to you from the heart. Oh, God. Y a todos los hispanos, los latinos. One of the big. A tous les franco-américains. There we go. That's language three. A tutti Next. gli italiani. Italiano, that's four. A tutti, a tutti. A toda a família portuguesa. E wow. brasileiras Boy, também. Wow, Brazilian Portuguese, no less. That's And fine. to all English. the continental English. Africans living in this country. No one knows what that And means. And to all the new Which Americans in our People country. It meant someone driving a Lincoln I invite you to join in our conversation. All right. All right. She hasn't been heard from. They dummied her up. I don't know where they sent her. Must be in Lausanne. On a, on a lakefront house with people who keep her in the house. I don't know where she is. I mean, I hope she's well. God, would I love to have Teresa Hines carry back. What fun that would be. How could you not love that on the Savage Nation? All right. I'll be here for another hour. Join the Savage Nation. Call now. 855-400-SAVAGE. Savage. Warning, the Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation, home of unprotected talk, borders, language, culture. And here he is, Michael Savage. Who's a hero? Why? It's Caitlyn Jenner, of course. I mean, she's a greater hero than John McCain or uh, Donald Trump. Look how brave she he was. He was she. Uh, it was his. Uh, a great hero. Four Marines, five Marines killed last week. Four Marines and a sailor. They're not heroes. Obama didn't lower the flags at half staff. He's waiting for something to do with uh, something else. No, indeed. Gave uh, Iran fast track to a nuclear weapon. They spit on us this next second after the U.N. vote today. And look at the twisted newspaper here in the Bay Area, which no one reads. It loses a million dollars a week. Bay Area and TV and broadcasting stars who went national. By Jessica Mullins of SF Gate, Monday, July 20th. I am the biggest local guy who went national in the history of the San Francisco area. And this journalist doesn't mention Michael Savage. No, the progressives are so honest. Did I teach him in journalism school? The stenographers, the salenterites? No wonder guys like Trump get mad at guys like McCain. It's enough to, to make you want to rip their earrings off. But you don't do things like that. Instead, you get even with them verbally. 
So we're talking Trump, Kerry, this, that, 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 da, 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 da. Incidentally, for those of you in the Bay Area who never heard of me, yeah, right. Oh, yeah, you've been on the radio 21 years in the Bay Area, I never heard of you. Who, what? Who, 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 never heard of him? Well, he's not one of us. He's not progressive. He's not progressive. 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 I'm a progressive. I'm a progressive. You know, that reminds me of a story about an Arctic explorer many years ago, 100 years ago. <clears throat> he reported that he was moving north toward the North Pole on an ice floe at a rate of three uh, miles a day. But he didn't know that the ice flow was moving south at a rate of five miles a day. So he was actually going backwards. That's what a progressive is. No one has ever defined a progressive better than I just did. They're moving backwards, but they think that they're going forward because they talk to each other on the same ice flow that's going backwards. That's all. Write it down. Put that into your hash pipe and smoke it. Something I've got to tell you about hashish that you don't know related to Islam and Muslims. Arabic, actually. The word hashish and assassin are one and the same or very similar. In fact, hashish comes from the Arabic for assassin. Did you know that? Because all Arabic assassins smoked hashish before going on murderous rampages. I'm not sure many of them do not do so now. For example, the Muslim who assassinated our Marines and the sailor last week was a druggie, a big drug addict. Now he's got P you know, PTSD. I'm supposed to have sympathy from the letter his alleged family wrote. The family didn't write it. The lawyer wrote it. They hired a PR agency probably in, in Riyadh. Not in Riyadh. They would hire a PR agency in wherever. Probably Bryn Mawr, Pennsylvania to write it for them. So we're just sitting here arguing over Trump while the jihadis are running wild in America. One after the other. They attack Pam Geller. Luckily, she was prepared. She had local police and bodyguards, and they shot the slime dead. Same exact M.O. Show up in a car and start blasting. They got killed. They should have wrapped them in bacon fat and, and set them on fire in the parking lot. But nevertheless, uh, these guys, this one, this drug addict, who just did in the sailors and the marines, right, the marines and the sailor, a drug addict, which uh, apparently is banned by their religion, didn't stop them from using the drugs. What, the religion doesn't ban killing uh, infidels? Isn't that on page 923? That we didn't mean it? We wrote it 1,100 years ago? Stop doing it already? Can someone write a postscript to their holy book and say, although it was written in ancient times, you really don't mean throw homosexuals off buildings? Can they put like an, an addendum, an appendix? Like a footnote saying it doesn't apply in our country? In this country, they don't throw gays off buildings. Please don't do it. And we don't shoot innocent people in this country. We don't chop people's heads off in this country. Can they give them that like on the, when they arrive and they're given a stamp by Obama? The instant citizenship stamp? Can they give them a little uh, printed sheet in Arabic? That's a no-no? Now you see why I'm not a progressive. Because I'm actually trying to take the country to survival land forward rather than putting us in reverse into a death spiral. And that's the same with Trump. Trump is trying to take us forward. McCain has taken us backwards. And that's it. End of story. Whole story. But many of you don't like Trump. And I'm going to give you a few minutes on the show because I believe in fairness. I believe in fairness on the Savage Nation. I want to hear from Stan on WABC on Line 8. Stan, what is this you're saying about Do Donald Trump? First of all, good afternoon, sir. And uh, go on. Yeah, okay. Go. Please go on. I know you're being polite, but with me, I'm not. If I answer those questions, we burn up airtime. So what's your point? Okay, let's do it. Look, it's not going to be his comments on John McCain that will take this man down, Trump. It will not be his comments on what he says about Hispanics, which are disgusting. It's going to be his Achilles heel which is his backing dealings over the last 30 years. Nobody, nobody gets to the top of a real estate heap in New York or the world without cutting corners. Now, he may be legitimate, and many of his deals probably are, but nobody gets this way to the top. And yeah, but you're, you're making an accusation. Hold it, hold it now. You're making a, an accusation that has no basis in factory would be in prison, wouldn't he? Well, they first have to check. I'm saying he may, many of his deals are legitimate, of course. But they're, they're being checked out now because as this guy gets more powerful and what he says, and you're saying it, he's on the top of the ratings. 
They're going to start checking him out. And Yes, but until they find that he committed something off base here, you can't say that his banking deals smell. Well, what basis can you make a statement like that? I said many of his things, but as he gets higher up in the ratings, there'll be more investigative journalism. Really? How about investigating Hillary Clinton's cash? How come I haven't heard you talk about that? I'll talk about it if you want. Okay. Well, how come we haven't heard about her scandals and the amount, the billions that they've raked into their their, their fake library? Doesn't that offend you? Well, you know, you, you've been after Mrs. Clinton for a long time. Well, forget what I've been after. Doesn't it bother you about the billions they've raked into their library under the guise of uh, tax a tax-free foundation? Shouldn't that upset you? I question it. But is it, is it illegal? Tell me if it's illegal. Oh, but you, wait, is it illegal? Oh, I don't know. Should there be an investigation? Yeah, if we had a Republican Party there, there should be an investigation. But you're jumping the gun and saying that all of Trump's banking deals are illegal. Investigated left and right. They haven't found a thing. When are they going to give up? Oh, yeah. All right. So who do you work for? Podesta directly or for who? Well, I'm, not, I'm not independent. I'm not a Democrat. I'm not a Democrat. I'm trying all right. To have, have, a, have a nice progressive afternoon. <laughs> You know, I promised in the last hour, I tell you, I did you my Friday night at the restaurant and this a discussion with a young man from Italy, right? Uh, you got that. Now, what happened Saturday? I forgot already. Sunday, I'll, I'll skip Saturday. It was a terrible uh, meal, a bad argument. It was awful. It was like a blur. Sunday, I went to the, uh, in the San Francisco area, we have a thing called the SF Bay Model, the San Francisco Bay Model. I had not been there since the children were little. They're grown now with their own children. I went to the San Francisco Bay Model, which was built in 1954 by the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers to be a model of all of the Bay Area's waterways, estuaries, the Delta, the Bay itself, and to study with this huge model built in the old Kaiser shipyard, one of the huge hangars where they built the Liberty ships. It's awesome. The water comes in and out like with the tide every eight seconds, and you could see it flood, a flood tide. It's unbelievable. And I learned, I mean, I learned a lot about it. It's astounding. I went into this place. There weren't a lot of people there. You know who was sitting and watching the whole video of uh, all about the tides in the bays? Guess which race and which ethnic group was sitting watching it? Japanese with their children. sitting in The whole thing they were studying. Little children with eyeglasses. They had eyeglasses. And the father and mother sat there attentively. No other race was sitting there watching. It was amazing to me. And you wonder why... Uh, certain uh, groups, uh, you know, excel in engineering and science, and why others don't. Okay, is that embarrassing in some way? Mike on KVOR Radio, go ahead, please. Doctor Savage, I just want to say welcome back. Uh, you have a different attitude today. Uh, you, you are going after it uh, like you did in the old days. I uh, we'll welcome you back. And what did you do this weekend that caused you to have uh, this uh, energy? To say it I don't know. It was, I'll tell you this. I'm going to give like a mother answer. It wasn't sex. I can tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> do, you, do you remember my mother, God rest her soul, <laughs> when she was on? Were you listening to the show in those years? She was 83 living alone in Florida and like in, in a retirement community. And I said to her on the show, Ma, what do you ascribe to your longevity to? And she said, what? She threw me off. I said, you know, your, your long years. I thought she didn't know what the word meant because she wasn't a highly educated woman. She says, in my case, she sets me up. I said, yeah. She says, oh, no sex. Remember that one, that great interview? I do. Unbelievable. So you feel that my spirit's back, is that it? Yeah, you're going after them. You, you know, you're bringing up things that uh, you normally say, oh, I don't want to talk about that. You're back. Uh, but you also, but you're saying something different, aren't you? You're saying that my spirit of humor is back, aren't you? Uh, your sarcasm, and, and you use it as a Yes. Humor, okay, so, so you can really hear it, Mike. How many years have you been listening to this show? Um, on and off for four or five years. That's all? Well, you're a newcomer then. I'm, jo <laughs> I'm joking. Oh, man, that's nice. But no, my spirit's very good right now. And uh, there are a couple of reasons for it. I have a new spiritual, a new faith in God. I, I mean, the guy, I swear, that's what's, one of the things I did is I have faith in God. I feel everything is sort of the way they should be. And there's, uh, there's like certain events I cannot control. I can analyze them. I can uh, comment on them, but I can't shape them. Not when you have a, a dictator in the White House who bypasses Congress and does what he wants. And, and the stooges in the media say nothing about the man's demonic 
authoritarian, totalitarian ways. What can I do about it? I'm only one man. But, Mike, all I can do is try, and I thank you for listening. Incidentally, if you're still looking for a copy of Countdown to Mecca, I have good news for you. I found out from the publisher, owing to the, to the sales of the book, the book has gone out to the bookstores again for summer reading. August is a big month for, uh, for novels, and I think with what's going on with the jihadis, people are seeing the title Countdown to Mecca, and they're saying, wait, what's this about? And they're picking it up because it's selling on its own, incidentally. You know that it's already what? It's already 18 minutes after the hour. We're talking about the McTrump, McCain, Republicans, Trump, McCain, McCain, McTrump, McCain. I'll be right back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Your Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com. It's the only company I trust for tangible assets, gold and silver. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O-I-N. Frank, let me get to it. He hit me. He's not a war hero. He's a war hero. He's a war hero because he was captured. I like people that weren't captured, okay? I hate to tell you. Do you He's agree with that? He's a war hero because he was captured, okay? You can have, and I believe perhaps he's a war hero, but, but right now he said some very bad things about a lot of people. That's the whole clip, and I think we should play it again. Frank Luntz is a putz, first of all. Set him up. I actually try to warn, I think I warned Trump about Luntz. I warned somebody about him. I, watch, I said he's a snake. And, um, you know, it's like, am I a personal friend of Trump? No. No, I am not. I am a member of his club in, in Florida. I go it once a year. Once a year I've been there. He's been very cordial to myself and my family. But I think, no, someone else told me that about Luntz. I said, no, I don't trust him. He's a left-wing fanatic. Now, why he would permit Luntz to even interview him is an example of what they do to anybody who wants to save America. And, and moreover, someone who respects America and America's borders, language, and culture. Look what they do. So listen again very carefully, and you decide whether he said that McCain is not a war hero. Listen carefully. Frank, let me get hero. to it. He's he hit me. Hero. He's not a war hero. He's a war hero. He's a war Five hero. And a half years He's a war hero because he was captured. I like people that weren't captured, okay? I hate to tell you. <laughs> do you He's agree with that? He's a war hero because he was captured, okay? You can have, and I believe perhaps he's a war hero, but, but right now he said some very bad things about a lot of people. So he said perhaps he's a war hero. Okay, <clears throat> I'm eating watermelon. That's how much I care about it. Not my problem, it's his. Let me finish the melon. Wait. It's a summer day. I'm enjoying the watermelon. I buy the slices in a container. It's a neutral food. It's actually a negative calorie food. 247 for this. It's just a ripoff. 247 fresh from the fields. Ugh, toxic. Never was good. It's neutral. I went to eat fish that I had left over from dinner last night. It was rotten. No one wanted the fish at dinner. They said, oh, Dad, take it home, Dad. You'll have it for lunch tomorrow. I said, great. I love a nice piece of fish. It costs like $29 in the Italian restaurant. I got it right to the refrigerator. A stink came off it when I opened it today. So I have no lunch. I'm a little faint. I'm eating watermelon, uh, yogurt. I hate yogurt. I hate it. I hate yoga. I eat it to the backup. It's sitting there in a container. It's convenient. If it was like I was on Naked and Afraid, you know what that would look like to me? Great. If I was on Naked and Afraid and I saw a yogurt hanging from a tree that was cold, I would eat it. That's about it. <laughs> but, but other than that, I, I can't stand it. First of all, I hate dairy. It makes my joints swell. So I eat, I, I eat goat yogurt. And they don't kill the thing. I like goats. They have like a nice beard. They never bothered me. The Indians slaughter goats by the millions. I don't know how they could do that to goats. Goat curry everywhere you go. Ugh, poor little creature. They look like my dog. They're probably smarter than Teddy. Who says a goat's stupid and doesn't want to? Yeah, he wants to get killed. He wants a guy with, like, garlic breath cutting his throat. Sure. No, they all want to live. And goats have some weird, I mean, such eyes. They cut right through you. If I were a goat, I'd be a mountain goat. I would go up to, like, 12,000 feet in the Himal Himalayas. Be some bastard would kill me anyway. Humans are disgusting. They gotta hunt everything on earth and crush it and kill it. Everything's gotta be killed if you're human. A goat, the thing was smart enough to evolve to, to live at 12,000 feet and eat snowberries. And they'll climb on a rock to shoot it and kill it. The humans are disgusting. The only animal that kills for sport. 
is the human. I have such contempt for humanity, you have no idea. That's why I'm sarcastic. That's where it comes from, in case you don't know it. Sarcasm comes from contempt for humanity. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE. 855-400-7282. Savage. But it's like LSD and... No, I don't go for it. Turn it off. It's slow. It's like from the era of sniffing glue and uh, you know, whatever. Hairy underruns, patchouli oil, STDs originated mainly around that period of time. Free love led to free, uh, free STDs. Came with it. Free love uh, led right to the to the doctor's office. Why not do it in the road? Look what we have now. It led to this, the breakdown of America. What else is in there? It's horrible, raining like crazy in L.A. I know, it's global warming, right? First the drought was global warming. Then the rain came and like God said, all right, let me give them some rain just to show the people how stupid they are and have no control over the weather. Oh, they look up. They may as well do a rain dance in the U.N. I think the Pope, when he comes here, ought to do a rain dance with feathers in his fez. As much sense as talking about global warming. It rained. It washed out a freeway. Heavy rain washed away part of California interstate. Severe flooding in California. I love it. <laughs> the plants are so happy. They don't know that it's because of a certain L-shaped hockey stick that it rained. They have no idea. It's called the weather, idiots. The unpredictable weather, morons. So they, but that's not the issue. Is there? It's carry. Iran nuclear deal, Trump, war hero. That's the whole story. Now, it is true that Trump did say it, he didn't say it, he almost said it, he could have said it, he might have said it, he was almost going to say it. You think he said it, he could have said it. I don't know if he said it, he might have said it. Who knows what Trump said, but he's no good, he's got to go. That's what's going on right now. Let me be very clear. To me, all active duty service members, except the top brass who hide their butts in the Pentagon, are heroes. Let me repeat it and write it down. All active duty service members except the top brass who hide the contractor butts in the Pentagon are heroes. The issue is Trump. The issue is McCain. We know that McCain is ro a rotten scoundrel. We know that McCain has opened the borders. We know that McCain doesn't stand for America anymore. But we also know that he's a war hero. Now, what did Trump actually say? That's the real issue. The bigger issue was not Trump McCain. The bigger issue was Obama selling us out to the mullahs and headscarves in Iran. The big issue was Obama going around Congress and going to the vermin in the U.N. and doing a deal behind the American people's backs. That's the real issue. And then the issue is the dead Marines from last week and how the media and the lawyer working for the vermin's family who killed these Marines in cold blood are trying to spin it that he had PTSD, he was on drugs, he didn't fit in, the, the poor Muslim was a victim, he had mental problems. Well, they all have mental problems if they do a thing like this. The ones who shot the cartoonist must have had mental problems too, if they believe they're supposed to kill infidels. I'd call that a mental problem. I'd call raping eight-year-old Yazidi girls a mental problem. I would call blowing up churches a mental problem. So now we're reading... Oh, he's a victim. That's the liberal media. He was a southerner, the Muslim who shot the Marines. And he had, uh, let's see, it was Andrea Mitchell, one of the worst people in the history of the world. By the way, Andrea Mitchell has a long history of an apologist for radical Islam, in my estimation. She has a long history of an apologist for criminals, in my estimation, including a former Federal Reserve chairman, a husband, who, by the way, many people believe destroyed the economy on purpose. So Andrea Mitchell last week was on MSNBC, the worst network in the history of uh, Al Jazeera, and asks the terrorist classmate, did he hunt? Did he shoot? Did he have guns? Was it a Southern thing? Or why didn't she ask, was it a Muslim thing? Was it in the Quran thing? No, she asked about Southern culture. But let me put it to you this way. All of Obama's lies and cover-ups for Islamic terrorism have been debunked. First, they used poverty. Then they used lack of education. Then they used lack of economic opportunity. Well, Abdullah Ziza Zaza Zuzu Zaza, who killed the Marines, Abdullah Ziza Zaza Zaza Zuzu, had a bachelor's in electrical engineering. And he came from a middle class family. And his Muslim father, although he was Palestinian, had a government job. And his Palestinian father sent his son to visit Jordan for seven months. And now the lawyer 
for Abdul Aziz Azaz Azaz's family is saying, oh, they sent him to Jordan to straighten them out because he was getting in trouble with bad people here. They didn't know. They sent him to Jordan. You hear that? They sent him to Jordan to get him away from bad people. And he came back as jihadi. How does that work? So you see, it's all a cover up and all a lie. It's all apologists. The Muslim gunman who killed four Marines and a Navy sailor straddled two worlds, smoking pot, drinking alcohol, and cage fighting while praying to Mecca daily and posting Islamic messages on the Internet. And the, the family is just shocked. They don't recognize the man. It's not their son. They have no idea. The family said in a statement crafted by a devious lawyer, quote, the person who committed this horrible crime was not the son we knew and loved. For many years, our son suffered from depression. It grieves us beyond belief to know that his pain found its expression in this heinous act of violence. You know, that family should, should be investigated. I'm sorry. I don't believe a word of it. These writings are written by their lawyer, in my opinion. And for them to bring up that he's depressed and this and that, then why didn't they commit him to a nut house? And why did they send him to Jordan, by the way, where as a grandfather? We are in such danger because, see, a fish rots from the head down. Obama's head is rotten from the head down. His brain has been cooked to the extent that we cannot protect ourselves. Or let's put it this way. We can protect ourselves. But the question is, how do we protect ourselves from this government? That really is the question. We know what they're doing here. We know what they want to do. We know why these things happen. We know why the Tsarnoff brothers were not investigated, even though they were uh, being monitored. We know why. So the policies of Bill Clinton disarmed American troops on our bases. And now his wife wants to be president again. God knows what she'll do to the military next. What's left of the military after this Muslim sympathizing regime is out of office if they ever leave office. And again, I have to refer to something else. I have to refer to the fact that yours truly has been trying to ring the bell on this for 10 years in all of my books. And those of you who follow me and see that I see things as they are, my last book is going to be called Government Zero, my last big nonfiction book. It's coming out in October. I wish it were out now because the subtitle says it all. Government Zero, the inside story of the progressive Islamic takeover. It's on Amazon. I didn't even know it was up yet. But I feel I have to ring the alarm on my subtitle, listen to my subtitle, The Inside Story of the Progressive Slash Islamic Takeover. From best-selling author of Stop the Coming Civil War, Michael Savage reveals the massive dangers currently leading to the demise of our government. Michael Savage has been warning Americans for decades. In Government Zero, Savage sounds the alarm about how progressives and radical Islamists are working towards similar ends. Pay attention now, all you good liberals, to destroy Western civilization and remake it in their own respective images. These two dark forces are transforming our once free republic into a socialist third world dictatorship ruled by government zero. Get the inside story before it's too late. If you want to go to Amazon, order your copy now. My suspicion is it'll be sold out before it's released. And I'll tell you something else. Just as Stop, just as Countdown to Mecca, although it beat three other books, was not listed by the progressives at the New York Times on the bestseller list what they did to Ted Cruz, but he finally got them to list his book. They did not list my book, Countdown to Mecca, even though I beat three major fiction writers. They wouldn't list the book in the top 15. There is a war against the truth. There is a war against conservatives. There is a war against our survival. And I am the true Paul Revere of our time. And if you remember, those of you who know me going back to the year 1994, before it was ripped off by a certain talk show who turned it into a comic book, Michael Savage ran the Paul Revere Society for many years. Do you remember it? You remember the events that we had at the Concord Airport Hilton, the Airport Concord Hilton, the Marines Veterans Memorial Auditorium? Remember the Triumph and Fryum, all of the great events where 2,000 people came, like-minded conservatives? The audience was awesome. This was before the Tea Party. I am the modern-day Paul Revere. And instead of screaming the... British are coming, the British are coming, the British are coming. I'll let you substitute the British for something else because they're already here, they're near, they're everywhere, and they're running your government, and they're not protecting you. Okay, that's it. There are many other topics. If you care to comment on any of them, my victory in the Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals must appeal to someone out there. We can touch on that. 
But I can't get off this topic too easily because these young men are dead because of the policies of this administration. Make no mistake about it. This didn't happen in a vacuum. DHS failed us. The director of DHS should be fired today and replaced by a returning war veteran. Or a policeman from the streets of America who's faced these, these radical Muslims before in a shootout. Then you'd have someone who could protect us. Rudy Giuliani should be made head of the DHS if you take the job. What would you do if you were given the job under a new administration of the Department of Homeland Security? What would the first thing you would do? I know what I would do. I would do what Representative Peter King said. I would monitor every mosque in the United States of America with a permanent FBI presence. So you can't do that. It's racial profiling. Well, hey, it's either them or us at this point. Take a look at all of the domestic terrorism events. With the exception of that punk white man who shot those poor black people in the church, which I railed against with great emotion. Tell me where 99% of the terrorists worshipped. One, a church. A, a church. B, a synagogue. C, a Buddhist temple. D, a Hindu temple. E, a mosque. F, in front of a Satan statue. And figure it out. And then go from there. And then you could do some police work to prevent the next attack. But that's, that's old-fashioned. That's Broderick Crawford's era of police work. That's a, I'm, I'm talking to you like a film noir character. I'm like a character from a late 40s or early 50s black and white movie. I recognize that you're used to men who have pancake makeup uh, like that guy Williams. That's who you get your news from. That's what you want. We don't know if he's a Muslim. We don't know if he's an Islamic. We don't know his motivation. Anyone who says otherwise is a racist. Uh, we don't care about chopped body parts. That's definitely tissue that's used for the right purposes. That's what you expect, don't you? All men in living color, no more than human tissue with pancake makeup is what they are. They have no heart, no soul, no mind. Well, I will not apologize for having a heart, soul, and mind. And although I sound like I'm in black and white, I'm actually in living color. I'll be right back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. My Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com. It's the only company I trust to protect my wealth. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O-I-N. Two and a half million illegals arrive under Obama. 400,000 a year. 100,000 Muslims a year. 100,000 Muslims a year. And the murderer in Chattanooga, Muhammad... I'm using Mizazazaz. A drug addict, a druggie. Now, I don't understand this part of it. He can't use drugs according to his religion, nor alcohol, but he was a heavy drug and alcohol abuser and a murderer. How does that figure? Oh, I see. He had PTSD from living in America. He had a hostile work environment. America, in fact, is considered hostile to this type of Muslim. See, you don't, don't understand something. When they come here from their pure, pristine nations where women are mutilated, uh, women are raped, go down the list. This is an affront to them to see women walking around in jeans, free as a bird. It aff it's an affront to them to see homosexuals holding hands in the street. And it gives some of them PTSD. So, in other words, it's a psychological misfit. So the answer is, of course, to bring more of them in and convert America to Sharia law so everyone's happy. It's not to stop bringing them in, right? That would be too logical for Obama. All right, that's enough sarcasm for the day. That's all. So Iran got what they wanted. Six world powers agreed on the nukes for uh, Tehran. And a minute later, they attacked the United States of America verbally and said we will trample upon America. Two seconds later. And Mr. Ketchup is still in favor of the deal. Yeah, Mr. Ketchup is still saying we'll prevent nuclear war. You hear this? A second after they got the approval in the U.N., even though I haven't gone to the mannequins in, in Congress. Congress. You say, oh, he's a congressman. Really? No kidding. Really? Oh, look at that. When I was a kid in New York, if someone was a con even an assemblyman had a tag on his license on the back of his bumper, it was a big deal because I was poor. So anyone with a political power in New York was, you know, they can get you a job in the post office or whatever. They can get you into the, uh, I, I don't know what they could do, but the, the low-ranking assemblyman in New York, they had in the back of their bumper like a thing that went up with a plaque that said Assemblyman District 4030209 in Brooklyn, whatever it said. 
Then they would put like a leather cover over it when they were basically getting free drinks and free dinners in Italian restaurants after work. And the, the bodyguards, now it's, it means nothing. It's, no, it's like a taxi medallion. U.S. Senator, a guy who had a taxi medallion had more respect in New York until Uber came along. They, those medallions were up to a million bucks apiece. They're worth nothing. No, when I was a kid, if a guy had three taxi medallions, we looked up to him. Whoa, look at you know, he's a hacky. Really? He owns three medallions. They're worth 40000 apiece. I'm talking in the old days. They were considered rich to our class of people. All of a sudden, the guy could own 10 of them. Now he's worth less than uh, zero because Uber came. Well, who invented Uber? That guy's smart. Smart guy. I mean, he figured out how to break the monopoly so he could drive every taxi driver in the world out of business. Now, you talk about disrespecting the military. Do you know who should be called on a carpet for disrespecting the military? You know who's not a hero? You know who just spit in the face of the military? Your communist president. Your communist president has not given an order to fly all U.S. flags at half-staff in honor of the five members assassinated by the Muslim bastard in Chattanooga last week. Sorry for using the word that I just used, but it's actually not a dirty word at all. He is a bastard. He killed those men. And here we have a president who has no respect for the military by declining to order that U.S. flags at the White House and other public buildings be flown at half-staff. He won't do it. Why? Why won't he do it? He invited the family of a traitor named Bergdahl to the Rose Garden. Remember that weird ceremony when Bergdahl's father spoke in Arabic? And we said he must be a jihadi or a, con a convert? And it's, oh, no. No, not at all. To the Rose Garden! The father, the mother of a traitor, Bergdahl, to the White House, to the Rose Garden, has not called out the terrorists to shut up to a recruiting station. No flag lowering. How come? Because he hates America, he hates the military. So if you're going to start talking about who disrespected the military with all of your snide liberal friends, ask him why your president, their president rather, has not ordered flags be flown in half staff for the dead Marines.